There is a pandemic going on right now, right under our noses, to most people in the developed world. To take a quote from an article by Paul Ehrlich, who wrote The Population Bomb, unhappily, rampant malocclusion and facial pain are actually only the tip of the iceberg. Symptoms of a more serious underlying pandemic. Children are increasingly walking around and sleeping with their mouths open, snoring, and along with adults, suffering obstructive sleep apnea and upper airway resistance syndrome. That paper will be paper number one below. And I think to, to really drive that home to people, if that doesn't make um, clear sense, is that when you take kids with the type of facial pattern that we are recognizing, these, the distorted facial pattern from living in a modern society, here is a paper by Collar. It will be the second paper down below. And he's taking kids awaiting adenoid and tonsillectomy. Adenoid tonsillectomy. These kids have sleep disordered breathing. So really they're snoring and they've got large tonsils. That's really the definition of the problem that's going on. And he's measured them as having a 10 point IQ deficit. Now that's huge. There's this sort of deficit that it doesn't mean, you know, you know, the difference between sending your kid to private school or state school is the difference between sending your kid to school at all. And I remember talking to Vic Veer, a very well respected ENT surgeon, so that's otolaryngology if you're in the US. And he's saying that he thinks that people with sleep apnea will live a decade less long because of the consequences. And we're reaching the pro a point where that's approaching 20% of the population. This is, this is so immense and no one's talking about it. And I tried to raise awareness by asking my profession, why are teeth crooked? It seems amazing that we don't know the answer to why teeth are crooked. We don't know the answer to the cause of why teeth are crooked or sleep apnea and a range of other problems going on with this complex here. The one single complex with lots of different problems. Remember, sleep apnea wasn't in my syllabus when I qualified as a dentist in 93, and now we estimate it's taking out 20% of the population a decade early. Now, I can only talk from the structural aspects, but structurally, something is going on. It's like we're a waxwork model We've got a bit too close to the fire and our faces are melting down. And that seems to be happening to everyone and no one wants to talk about it because it's staring us in the face. It is our face. Now, having tried to raise awareness of this in 2009 with an article, The Black Swan, <clears throat> I'll put that down underneath as link number three. Then as link number four, I'll put a link to all the writers I wrote to the well, to everyone. I mean, everyone. I mean, you know, how can I raise my awareness, my, my concerns? What channel have I got to raise concerns? There seems to be none. No one wants to listen about the concerns I have. Anyway, further down the line, five and a half years ago, I was reported to the General Dental Council. The case is ongoing. It's being delayed again. And so what's interesting about this particular case is that the parents are overjoyed with the outcome. I think I've done an amazing result for this child. And yet I'm being taken to court. If I was really dangerous, if I was really causing a problem, would five and a half years not be a little bit slow to bring me, to investigate what I've been doing? I think people need to really look under the surface sometimes. You need to not just believe the first thing that you hear and, you know, this is important. 
so many children are having orthodontic therapy. And I'm not saying it's all wrong. I'm just saying we need a closer inspection of what's going on with this. I think to give a, um, a slight snippet is that a Cochrane review, and that would be the next link down, said that there's a very low certainty that common orthodontic procedures were justified. Now, if we've got a Cochrane, you know, high level review saying that, then I think we need to have a general, a general look into what's happening in orthodontics. And, you know, I'm, 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 I don't think I have all the answers, but I definitely think I'm asking the right questions. And all I've really ever asked for is a scientific process. That's what I would really like. And what we need to be doing is asking those questions why. That's part of the scientific process. And all I've really asked for is a debate on why teeth are crooked. If we don't know, then surely we should investigate. We should have open discourse. And that's what's been held back for me and all of, let's say, the rebel orthodontists. We've never been able to engage in research, which would be lovely. I hear lots of people saying, oh, you have lots of opportunities to have research, be engaged in research. We haven't. Sorry, that is not true. And we've never really been able to engage. These are, it's easy to say, oh, they had lots of opportunities. I'd like to see some evidence of those opportunities we had. I'd like to see some evidence of the debates or the inquiries. And all I'm asking for is, is scientific engagement with my profession. That's all. Quite a large group of dentists and orthodontists are asking for proper engagement, full, free and fair engagement on these topics. That's what we want, where no one's excluded. And that's often been the problem in investigations into this area. And one good example of this lack of engagement that goes on between the rebels and mainstream orthodontics is the response to this book. You know, here is a book by Paul Ehrlich and Sandra Khan outlining this pandemic as we're all seeing going on or believing we can see and we just want to demonstrate. The response was written by Dr. Ackerman and it's in the website. I'll put this down as the final link in, in the website, the orthodontic professors. And it, well, I question if Professor Ackerman has really read the book when he gives this response. And what really makes this more intriguing is the first response from someone, Arnold Alderman, DDS, is that Dr. Ackerman and Prophet have been collaborating in orthodontic literature since the 60s, when I was privileged to be one of Dr. Ackerman's postgrad students. As has always been the case, their conclusions are based on sound investigation, and he read it, and presented in a clear and coherent manner. I mean, I, I ask you to judge yourself, you know, read this book or read the article that I've posted as link number one and then read the last article and see if these clear and cogent manner. I mean, it is not clear and that is not engagement. You know, and yeah, I see this put up so many times as a response to when I talk about this book. We need to talk, we need to communicate. That's what science is all about.